Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Today, coming at you with me, Sips, <laughs> and Pyrian Flax. Hang on, I thought you were going to say what that, is up? that you were you were Sips. You're not Sips. Yeah. He's a separate entity. With me, comma. I'm a separate entity. Sips. With me, Sips. There wasn't there no enough comma? of a pause or change of tone. Yeah. Well, how long yeah. is the pause? Okay, you sorry. You needed to go with me, Sips, and Pyrian Flax. That takes yeah, that's too long. way better. You could tell that... Flax is How about seasoned. with me, Sips, and Perian Flax? Yeah, it's either quicker with me, Sips, and Perian Flax, but with me, okay. Sips, and Perian Flax, I? that sounds like... With I, Sips. <laughs> so you wouldn't say... if it was... No, it doesn't. I think that would be a cool cool robot. Hey, I was just watching an advert. I was watching Frasier. I was watching Frasier, a classic classic Triforce uh, show in the morning. Yeah. You're such yeah. a human being, I know. P. Flax. And they had, they had an advert on for, for dentures. Right. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not at the denture stage of being old yet, fair enough. No, you know? close. But the funny, the funny thing is, is at the end of the advert, they show a woman doing something that obviously to the denture wearing crowd is like the money shot. And she she bites into an apple like she yes. doesn't give a fuck. It's she always goes, an apple. It's always and she looks at the camera like fuck yeah, I just ate an apple. And I'm thinking yeah. it's interesting how your perspective on what's cool changes as you get older. And for the denture crowd, oh she she bit into an apple. Like she didn't even care. Man, That's can you imagine though? Evil like can you, evil. You haven't them. been able to eat an apple for like for the longest time. Like yeah. when you're a kid, the last thing you want to do is eat an apple. But when right. you're older and you've got dentures and you can't. Yeah, they're not they're not they're not attached to your gums strong enough, so when you bite in, your teeth fall out. Yeah, that's a problem. I've oh, had yeah. that experience. You right. know, it's like um, you got dentures. Like fuck, when I had um, braces, oh. you know, I had braces on for a oh, few of years course, when I was yeah. a teenager, and you know, biting into an apple there is one of the things they tell you not to do. Indeed, and I mistakenly did it one time without thinking. And it was like, like it was like there's like a twang, and everything came loose, and it was like barbed wire stabbing into my gums. Oh, it's you know I mean, it was like, right. it was like a kind of like it felt like World War Two, and I'd got caught in like the Germans fucking razor wire as I was trying to climb over the. Jesus Christ! Anyway, P Flax, you are an incredibly ordinary human being, uh, sitting on your sofa watching Frasier with your new puppy yes I was, uh, where, was he sitting is he sitting with she he she, or she? she she was she sitting with you calmly no, I, well, she, she, no. we don't let her on the sofa that often no um that because, often how long have you had her yeah yeah that, let's let's get some perspective on All this right, one got, got her got her yes you've had her for 12 hours <laughs> that yeah. often yeah but i mean <laughs> well know, one you, thing you, we <laughs> like to uh do with her uh, we've been doing it for a long time we've owned her for 12 hours uh <laughs> we uh <laughs> all i'm saying is she's she's allowed on in the evening when she's sleepy she has little sleep next to mrs f on the sofa but during the day she's you like mean in the one evening of a yeah. night. she's been there look of all a, i'm saying is this is the way we're gonna go forward if you want i can just pretend like this isn't the way things are gonna be and and keep continually say we've only had a day but or or you can just accept that this is the this is the regime and that we've tried to stick to it from the start and we're gonna stick look, to it that's the way if you animals went on a like date with a woman if you were met a, or you met a new person you had to do with right, coming on the, the dog, and you've been there Lewis. for They've been there for, tw you've had that dog for 12 hours. Right. You're dating okay. your dog. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> and Lewis how, is. How do you, how do you know that all this detail yet? You can't, you don't even know someone after a day. I mean, I barely know people. They've been working here six years. Well, that's on you. <laughs> that's because you have, uh, you have no social barometer. That's why. Um, I suppose I don't let them on the sofa either. No. Yeah. Yeah. So in future and going forward and so far, she is allowed on the sofa in the evenings only when I'm working upstairs and Mrs. F is, is downstairs. So, you know, because the thing is, she's she's too little to jump off the sofa, right? She'll hurt herself right. if she jumps off how the old, sofa. How old is this dog? She is 12 weeks old. Wow. Yeah, so she's, uh, she's very have you sweet. Ever, um, have you ever trained a dog before? Yes. Oh, yes, okay. I have. Okay, good. Um, how long ago? Oh, yeah. gosh. Well, I was a teenager, so it's not like it's it's gone from my memory. But yeah, she yeah, was. Yeah. Hmm. She, she's, she's not ready for training yet, but... Um, we're going to take her to puppy training classes because um, there's one right. thing I hate. It's a, it's a dog that hasn't been trained at Fuck. all. But, you know, you got to train them up. So, you got to so train. So why them. did you why did you get a pupa in the first place? What's the what's the mot what's the motivation for for the girl? To the, the girls really really wanted a dog for a long time. Right. Um, and we figured like the kids now like the way I see it, you got to continually set yourself challenges and and change things up and add a bit of bit of freshness to your life. Otherwise, it gets stale. And I was I was in a bit of a rut in terms of my day. It was basically drop kids at school, stream, collect kids from school, hang around, cook dinner, 
stream you know it was like that that was pretty wow. much my day it does so, not sound like a rut but okay well it, it is after five years i, I feel like that's a bit rutty so i best. thought it was it was fun but i also thought you know what would be nice is going for a walk in the a morning companion. having the dog you know it, she's very sweet the kids love her um and i just thought it, it would also give them a sense of responsibility which they completely lack right um and this has actually really changed their view of things like already is they're like tidying <laughs> i'm not even kidding they had this for a night they're, they're, all right, Lewis, when was the last time my kids when was the last time my kids saw a pair of shoes in the middle of the floor and put them in the shoebox no never it's never happened right it's never happened right. got the dog we've had her as as lewis has it at great pains to point out less than 24 hours and already they're picking <laughs> stuff up oh don't leave that there don't leave that oh i can't put that there and i was like this is working this is fucking it's working. working that's it's it's the honeymoon time. Time. your period. house is gonna be can spotless. i can i just say it's a honeymoon period your kids will go back to not doing stuff very no because then their shoes will get eaten she's, right. she's gonna be consistent my dog ate my shoes one time and yeah. uh i was i was i was vexed beyond but you vexed. were you mad at the dog or were you mad at yourself the dog uh, yeah. Very, very. You weren't mad at yourself. For I him wanted out. to kill him. So you learned um, nothing. Yeah, no, I was not mad at myself because I, I'm a human. I, I'm allowed to leave my shoes wherever I want, and I don't think I should expect them to be eaten by a piece of shit dog. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, put in what's there. its name? Her name? Have you got a name yet? Agnes. Or is it She's Agnes. 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 Yes. Agnes. That's a really nice name, actually. Flex. That's literally my grand's name. It was not intentional. You've named it, you've named your dog the same name as my grand. It's always got to be about okay. you, eh, Lewis? Hey, no, oh, it's always got to be about Agnes, you somehow. It's a very human name. Yeah. I like that, isn't it? I like I like animals with human names. My friend Dave had a cat called Glenn, named after Glenn Hoddle, but a cat called Glenn. I my thought friend was funny. Dave had a dog called Dave. Oh yeah, like well, it's nice. Give him a real name. Yeah. I feel like actually dogs can have more human names because they are like dogs are one of the only people. Like uh, people, one of the only um, animals that actually like love love you. Yeah, they um, really do. I think they love that you are able to to give them food, so they don't have to go no, and that's look what, for it. No, that's what cats are. Cats love you that you're able to give them food, but dogs that do actually love you. It's weird. They're actually like genetically. Um, we, we bred they, them they, for they, that like, bond to you and stuff. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. So so. Um, what breed is it? It looks like a, at first glance, it looks like a wrinkly thing, but I she's don't a, think she's it a is. French bulldog, right? Um, okay, which has drawn some criticism from certain corners of yeah. the internet. Right. Um, Why is this? Because is it one of the? It's not one of the cruel ones. No, right? I mean, look, she, she first of all, she's she's very healthy dog. Um, people are saying I don't really want to go into it because it's just annoying. It just fucking gives people a chance to climb on their high horse, which she can't do because she has such small legs. Right. So, okay. you know, stop high horsing it. It's it's kind of <laughs> leggist. Right. Well, I mean, even when I got Terry, you know, I had the same thing. I had yeah, all, people all are dicks. People you know, they got to fucking run the their opinion. Saying, yeah, because the thing is, it's, um, yeah, there's like best practices, sure, for like owning any animal, right? But you're never, you're not going to get perfect. And and every animal, like like a person, is different too, right? Right, like, right. So, There's cer you know, certain things that they'll like that may be not conventional. Like, for example, Lewis fucks a stuffed dolphin constantly <laughs> and every day. Right. Not everybody does, but Lewis does. So he has to be able to be himself. And sometimes dogs eat shit out of their own ass. And not every dog does that, <laughs> but some dogs do. And you some just do. Got, sometimes you just got to let a dog be a dog. Right, and you got to let, let him, let him dog it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the same way, though, that you have to make smart choices. Um, you know, some people breed dogs very cruelly. I don't know. I don't think bulldog is one of the ones which is. Well, I know some of them have been bred very, so they can't breathe and stuff. Right, right, and right. Have back problems. Well, she's not like but, that. I, I met her mum. She was a fine, a fine shaped dog. You know, she was in really good nick and and seemed very happy and everything. And it's mostly in like the pedigree and the dog. Yeah, show but these stuff, are like professional people, breeders. The the you know they they're not breeding like those dickhead dogs that fall apart after two seconds. She's built to last, quite clearly. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We ain't got sold a duff one. No. This is, what was this one? Made in China. Look at it. It's a piece of shit. She is. Bits she of is it falling off. In good nick. All right. so, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. So so are you, is this going to, because you said to me at the start, well, you, you, you in the Triforce uh, WhatsApp group this morning, you said, not going to be able to do the podcast very long, so I have to make sure the dog isn't left alone. No, yes, I said I, I wanted to make sure enough. we started on time, because right. so I could come up, do the podcast, and then go back down, because, yeah, she'll be okay. But she's in a little cage for an hour. Um, that's fine. Uh, I've got the, the cleaner is over as well, so I wanted her just out of the way for a little bit. Um, 
and she can't come upstairs at the moment because we're still introducing her to the cat. Oh, fuck. You got right. a cat already, too? Yeah, we have a cat. And the cat came downstairs last night, took one look at the dog, and just backed slowly out of the room. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, we, we had to get a few things like... I mean, the, the dog was in her cage because I knew the cat was coming downstairs. So I quickly popped her in a little cage. And, um, it's like a cartoon. And let the cat sort of have a, have a look at her. And the cat was like, yeah, this isn't working, and just sort of left. But we've, we've moved the cat's food upstairs, and she's got a litter box upstairs, so... She's she's happy enough, but I, I'm gradually going to try and introduce her to the idea that the dog is not going to kill her. Yeah. <coughs> the last dog, of course, was the hell dog, my mum's old dog. Oh, you're right. Of yeah, course. I was surprised the, that you got a dog based the on that hell experience. Dog. Well, I, I've, I've had dogs I before. I remember as soon so. as I saw the picture, I was like, oh, fuck. I wonder if this dog's going to be like his mum's dog. Like straight no, away, no, no, that's no, what no. I thought. She, she is 100% a sweetie pie, and my mum's dog was a vicious piece of shit who is now presumably ruining some other people's lives so uh good luck to them wow yep well you know maybe they can maybe they they've got a they haven't got small kids and it's not such a problem right <laughs> jesus maybe two a big farm a big you know stick stick him on a farm where he can go wild to just you know yap at like cats and rats and stuff is like Indeed. that solves so he'll probably be all right with that i'm sure so you've got a safe space upstairs for the cat. Yeah. You've got the dog downstairs. It's all, it's all, it's all safe. Yeah. It's all fine. It's all good. Is he going to be terrified of the Hoover? I'm now concerned about the cleaner Hoover. I mean, dog you know, the, the way I see it, if something freaks your dog out, that is something that it's going to have to come to deal with. They just have to get used to it. Uh, you, like yeah, for real, like, you, same... you can't be like, "Oh, we're not hoovering anymore" because it freaked the dog out once. She'll get used to it. No, well, my absolutely. dogs used to hate the Hoover, but you know, fuck, it's part of life. Dealing with a Hoover is a part of a dog's life, isn't but it? But then again, there are ways. I'm sure there's actually ways to introduce the Hoover in a less yeah. You traumatic vacuum manner. the dog's back with it. That's what. It, that, right. Just, yes. Okay. Just run yeah, it over them. And say, Get used to it. No, you know she's gonna. She'll deal with it. It was okay. quite the well. only traumatic thing for her yesterday was getting in the car and coming back because um, I bought her from someone. It was Northwest London, and I had to come back down to Southwest London. And Google Maps was like, "Ugh, don't go in the M25. Trust me." I was like, "All right." So I went through London. A bit, not you know, sort of south all way, and um, it was fucking awful. The traffic was terrible. We were stuck in traffic. Did you take for ages. A39? I don't know. Uh, you don't know yeah, the you roads did. around well, here. Did you turn left at the roundabout? Oh my god! Did you take the M three two five? I wasn't even giving you guys the route. Uh, don't do that. I wasn't doubting it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see the new? Uh, did you see the new giveaway sign that they put on the roundabout? Oh, I can't by... believe it! There's speed camera. Oh, They've got speed trap beaut. there now. So. They have made it 20 miles an hour in my entire area. They did this mm. overnight. Like they didn't tell anyone. They're just suddenly 20 mile an hour signs everywhere, which I'm all for because it's like. First well, you got all, a cat and a dog. Yeah, we got a cat, a dog, and two kids. I, I'm happy with it. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people say it's got to take forever to get anywhere now. I'm like, you, you never go over 20 in London anyway. What the hell is wrong? Always takes forever to get anywhere. London's fucking ridiculous. Came out from London the other day, and I was like, had I like I blew my nose, and I had like black like smog in my nose. I couldn't believe were it. You, I was like, were I was you only in there cleaning in... out chimneys or something. What are you I wasn't. About? I just... yeah, anyway, he was Van Dyking um, it up last weekend. Sips um, came down to Bristol. That's right. Oh, how was it? And it was amazing. It was the fucking okay, so best, first man. All, it's the best trip ever. It's the best trip it, anyone's ever had to Bristol ever, Flax. <laughs> nice. It was like, Everyone had a good was, time. Everybody was so happy. Oh, it's the best. It reminded me, first of all, of a lot of the times that I've hung out with Sips over the last 10 years. And it felt like nothing had changed in 10 years as well. You know, because like 10 years ago, we'd meet up. We'd go for like a pizza. We Sips would order a margarita. I'd have, you know, something spicy. And then we'd go out and then go to the cinema, okay, or whatever. Oh, yeah, we did go to there. We, we saw Doctor Sleep. Sips was fucking more terrified by the trailer for a different movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He looked over at me. He was, like, sweating. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> Man, that movie did look fucking scary, though. Holy shit. What was it and called then, again? Uh, it's that one where there's, like, the, there's a murder in a house and the house is cursed. Uh, and the curse, oh, of, the, the curse, of course, is that classic old horror trope. The house is cursed by an old granny who looks Ugh. creepy as fuck and drives a car and stuff. And you're just Bleh. the elderly don't get much of a break when it comes to horror. Uh, be, being old apparently is is scary enough in itself. Like how many movies you seen where the whole horror reveal is there's an old lady in there and everyone goes ah. Yeah, well, like, the, I mean, Doctor Sleep is a little bit like that, I guess. There's a there's definitely an old. Sort of, she's got some boils or some like some uh, pussy pussy nodes on her 
skin. Jesus. Yeah. Come out it's of orange. the bathtub and shit. Like I always scream when I look at my face in the mirror when every day and there's the new wrinkle there or something, some horrible boil. I've got got a lance. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 a terrifying coming to terms with your slowly sagging face and slowly looking more and more like your dog. The moral of the story is life stinks. Boys and girls, don't get and old. And then you die. The end of the movie should be an old lady biting into an apple and, yeah, uh, and scaring the be. shit out of all the kids, <laughs> showing them her teeth. <laughs> My Penny teeth pizza. work again. <laughs> New denture paste. Stick some right, sticks the teeth right good up onto your gums. I remember a commercial from when I was a kid. We used to make uh, we used to make fun of it a lot. And it was uh, same sort of thing. Flax. It was a, a woman biting into an apple, but it's just the way she said it was very funny. She's like. Look at me <laughs> eating an apple. <laughs> and then we just used to run around, just like repeating that line all the time. Like just like you see a, a bus drive by you, and you'd look and you'd be like, "I wonder my friends on there." And all you'd hear, like from out the back of the window, eating an apple, <laughs> just driving down the street. <laughs> and then, then you'd see that, and then it would be like it would that that would warp, right? The sound would warp. Eating a <laughs> and then it would like the, the screen would flicker and you'd be like eh! and then it'd be like she'd suddenly turn into like a corpse with like maggots like coming out of her Jesus mouth you know? and then it'll flash back to like normal granny again and she'd just like tilt her head that. sorry that's what that anyway we watched um Do- watched movie Do- it was good Dr. Schlepp. we went we had we then we ate um we ate pancakes we ate no uh, waffles so I, we had waffles waffles sorry we had waffles yeah. and i spoke to alex with real and maple Bryony syrup as well not even fake it's real. So we went to this place and ordered uh, these waffles. And I, when I spoke to when they when they came, it was massive. And I spoke to Edson Brady, and they're like, "Oh yeah, did you have one of those waffles? We normally, you know, share it between four of us. But me and Sips had one each. It was like a a pizza. It was breakfast. Of waffle. It was breakfast. Oh God, that was insane. And then we had another pizza. Uh, then we drank like five pints of cider and went to see Ghostface Killer. Oh, that was um, amazing! Fuck me, I'm, I've thought I've been, I've thought about it every day since uh, since we went. Okay, you tell me what you thought about the entire thing, and then I'll give my well. Because his is going to be negative. I can tell you right no, now. No, well, it's not negative. Right. It's just not what I expected. I'm a long time is- fan. I'm a big uh, Wu Tang fan, and especially uh, Ghostface Killer fan. Uh, I've listened to a lot of his solo stuff over the years, and uh, I listen to a lot of like older hip hop and. Ghostface, one of those guys that keeps it real, you know, he's still releasing albums, but they still have that like 90s sound to them. And he's a very distinctive. He's a really good lyricist and everything. And he's just had an album out uh, this year. So I thought, okay, cool. Saw the tweet. It's like, fuck yeah, Ghostface Killer. He's going to Bristol. I go to Bristol all the fucking time. Like I go there to do work and stuff. So fuck it. Well, I'll go over there. I'll do a bit of work. Go see Ghostface. I'll get some tickets, see who wants to come with me sort of thing. Um, and then, so I'm thinking to myself, he's just had a new album out, you know, he's probably going to be trying to like promote it somewhat or whatever, he, you know, he's going to be, he's, he's, he's going to be singing a lot of, uh, uh, like tracks off of that singing. He'll be, you know, sing, singing his, some, some tracks off of that or whatever. And I just thought, whatever, who cares? Like I get to see him live and stuff. It'll probably be a really good show. Hopefully, you know, it's Bristol, it's the UK, like he's popular enough, but he's still like pretty underground and stuff. So it might not be that busy and stuff. So whatever. So we we went and the show was amazing. Like fucking all of these old ass callbacks to like classic tracks from like 36 Chambers and like Iron Man and like fucking a whole bunch of his earlier solo albums and stuff. Uh, there was like he had a guy with him who is like his uh, it's like it's like his protege. Like uh, he's being mentored by Ghost. It's called, a guy called uh, Tri- Trife, Trife the God. But he's like a like a lesser known guy. But he was just doing like hype man stuff and everything. And the show was really good. And it was just fucking amazing. I was just having a really good time, like just like rapping along to all the songs and stuff. And then after the show, I bought a shirt and I got it signed and I got my picture taken with them and everything. It was just great. Fuck, it was so good. I want to. I want to go again. I want to. I want to see like uh, some more. Some more shows. Uh, just... You sound like you've just been on to Old Towers and you went on like a oh, great ride. And you're man, like, no, it let's, was. Let's do it again. Oh fuck, it was. Come it on. was so good. I'm though. not going to puke up my milkshake this a time. A lot of fun. It was. We'll it again. was fun hanging out with like everybody as well. But like, uh, and it, well, it was kind of fun 
taking a bunch of people who aren't really into hip hop and have never listened to Ghostface before and seeing like their reactions to it. And so I think everybody had a pretty good time though. No, I think they but, did. Uh, well, I guess, I guess you're about to tell me whether you did or not. <laughs> no. Well, so, okay. So first of all, I, 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 I didn't know what to expect. I, this is not something I would have normally gone to, but Sip seemed excited and I was like, sure. Um, uh, we invited um, Harry from the office of Blue Goose and Bree and um, who else came? Someone else came? It was anyway, it was about Duncan. four of Duncan came. So about, you know, five or six of us. Um, and it was at this place I've never been to, but I've walked past a lot of times. It's like kind of like a slightly grimy nightclub. You know, one of those kind of slightly sticky floor places. Yeah. Sounds like um, Yonkon. It was. Yeah. Yeah. The same Very sort of reminiscent. As, as yeah. yeah. Um, Excellent smoking and, section. It was like outside. It was great. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't know. I used to go to a lot of gigs when I was a teenager with my friends from school. And I, the crowd I was in was kind of a bit of a weird group. And they were really into like very death metal -y stuff with a mosh pit, lots of screaming and shouting. And I kind of just tagged along. It's like, uh, you know, I'm never, I'm never the guy organizing this stuff. I don't know. It's funny. It was, they were always very scary gigs. It, you know, they were in central London at some sort of, some sort of slightly down market venue, very loud, very like violent, like jumping around and stuff. And I came out of them obviously quite, I don't know, quite scared. I, 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 I got used to it, right? But and I did this. I did, I, Russ, I did this quite regularly. Anyway, I was a bit. I was prepping, like psyching myself up for a similar situation here because I thought that I was. I was quite. I was quite threatened by it. Now looking back, now '90s hip hop is this thing that at the time was very scary and threatening. Okay, and it's like explicit lyrics talking about you know shooting people and you know people from you know these poor areas of you know deprived you know like black neighborhoods like the projects and stuff and all this you know do you know what i mean yeah do you know what i'm talking about i actually said it wrong actually you're supposed to say nah mean no. now that you've been to a ghost face <laughs> show you can say it you're allowed you can even add a, a dog on the end there if you wish and i i think ever always rap has had and hip-hop has had this kind of slightly threatening demeanor to it right and that's part of the allure that it's kind of pushing the edge of what's acceptable and definitely still today this stuff is still happening with like the rappers like 69 or whatever or that guy with tattoos all over his face I and think neck that's 69. like 17 that is 69 but there's another there's like a kid who's, one, one who's of them is uh, one of them inspects or goes to his uh, daughter's uh, gynecologist uh, sessions to make sure that her hymen oh, is T.I. I think his name uh, is yeah. rapper T.I. Yeah. do you know what I mean it's just awful and you know you you that world feels deliberately very um, I don't know like excluding to, 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 to regular chumps like like, like boomers like me or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like myself. So like, like my damn it, self. It feels like, I, do you know what I mean? I'm not, it, it's deliberately scary and threatening and that's part of it and I get it. And anyway, I was I was almost expecting that a bit. And and so, because, you know, Bristol does have like quite a big um, area up in St. Paul's where there's like a lot of black people. They have a big festival. <laughs> I love like how a big quickly you say black so, people. Very quickly. Yeah, a black community. You know, legit, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to say it, but you know, <laughs> no, it's, fine, it's got it's a fine. big. I could just tell you're nervous community. about what, what you're what you're gonna say. I could tell. That I am, you don't want to offend step anybody. On any toes. And, yeah, exactly. I but it. so I don't know. But I but I feel like I've been. I was wrapped up in this idea that we were gonna be the only white guys there, and it was gonna be like I'm gonna totally not fit in, and I, it was gonna be weird. And so anyway, we get in, and I just you know dump my coat because it's fucking freezing cold so everyone's like wrapped up anyway so there's this big queue for the cloakroom we all dump our coats and gloves and stuff get a drink and then the whole place is just it's like um, a sea of like m just a mixture of people of all ages mostly young white guys um, and some girls and some older people like some dads there's like a disabled guy there and you know just a whole just a whole mix like a whole cross section of like just ordinary looking people and um and and the first act is like this this white rapper who is rapping about how much his dad supported him to do this and like his dad's in the audience he like waves it's like super wholesome okay it's like not what i expected at all um sound like and then it kind of then it, there was this other guy who was like actually a pretty good rapper, and he he was like he was obviously a British rapper. Like I think he'd come down from London, or maybe he was local. Yeah, he was good. But he was like, actually the, all the opening acts were surprisingly good. I didn't expect them to. be But that his great. raps were very kind of because because I, I 
because there's like a big UK like grime scene and a big like and I oft, I've watched a few of like there um, wasn't many scrat but there was a couple of bo 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 bos I don't know if you noticed but like it wasn't too <laughs> bad anyway it like his he was bad. rapping and like it was it was good to listen to like I could actually with the English accent and stuff I think it. I was able to like hear everything that was said and it was kind of like it made a lot of sense like I don't know it was just nice it was it was lyrical Sips was enjoying it I was enjoying it they both had a uh, like a bit of a 90s sound to them as well which helped too like I yeah, prefer and it felt- that sort of that that sound like that the beats were like very sort of like uh heavy you know like they were like I like felt incredibly beats. safe and then there was like a few a few tall people came and stood in front of me and I, so I sort of had to move away from them because you know there's always tall people at these things and so it's going to happen it's going to be like a seven foot tall guy who just walks in front of you at some point uh-huh. and then there was this at the same time there was a, a woman there who was who was like she looked like she looked about mid 20s but she was she stank. She was incredibly sweaty, okay? Yeah. And she was just constantly dancing. You know, like she was on some sort of drugs. Like she, It looked like she'd walked from... Bumping and like grinding. The wrong, That's what she... She was like, she was in the wrong place. Like she was supposed to be at a trance gig or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or some, some, some different event. So she's just danced away in front of me and sips like really sweatily. Um, <laughs> nice really description. Weird. I like that. <laughs> and then in the meantime, there's like, because Sips announced on this podcast that there were still some tickets available... There were like about, I'd say, 20 or 30 I, fans. I there. don't think I said there was tickets available. I just, I think we just said that we're going. I, I thought you did say that there were some available. Oh, I, that that well, does ring a bell. I could right. be wrong, it but doesn't, I, it does um, ring it a bell. It doesn't matter. All right, but okay. whatever, hap- whatever happened, we met about 20 fans there. Because originally I was confused. I was like, so do you guys just, did you guys just love, have we just stumbled upon like something which, I didn't know there was such a massive Yogg's cast, Ghostface Killer crossover audience, you know? Yeah. But a couple of them were like, oh, yeah, Sips mentioned it, so we got to it. Like, okay. <laughs> nice. You <laughs> so, owe me, Ghostface. So, you owe me. So that was good. I spoke to this one guy who was like, he looked like me from 20 years ago, i.e. he was like, just had glasses, was wearing like a smart shirt, um, you know, quite a nerdy looking guy. And I was like, what are you doing here? He was, just, he, was, he, was he just said, I come to all of these. I come to what I come and see whoever's on, whatever's going on. And I was like, wow, you just come to just not having any idea what's on. You just turn up. And he was like, I didn't know, have any idea who Ghostface was, but you know, I wanted to, I always come here. And I was like, you come here on your own. Anyway, he, he, he looks like a future serial killer. I'm sure shout out to you if you're doing all Jeez. right. Shout out to everyone I met. Shout outs. We're doing shout outs. Oh my hey, God. I was flex. told off for doing that. Sorry. Rightly so, too, Lewis. You shouldn't be doing them either. Sorry. <laughs> you be ashamed <laughs> of yourself. So how, well, I, I want to I ask you guys a question about, about, uh, Go about this, this kind of music, okay? So in the, in the uh, late 80s and the early 90s, when, when gangster rap was a thing, Sips will know what I'm talking about, of yeah. course, there was a lot of, this is bad, this is encouraging violence, blah, blah, blah. And the sure. counterpoint was always... We're just singing about what we know, yeah. And this is our neighborhood, and this is this is our, you know, how we grew up. And these are the things that we, um, oddly enough, even if it sounds unpleasant to an outsider, perhaps it's it's kind of nostalgic for them, I guess. I I was I've been thinking about this point a lot, and the idea that you just sing about what you know and dust your hands of any responsibility for people being influenced or inspired or the the glamorizing of of that lifestyle i think is is a little bit silly so for example drill music in the uk is is at the moment that's like the um the bet noir of, is that um, like the ultimate the dad music or am i no no drill drill is the opposite it? of that drill right. is is very hardcore it's sort of got its roots in uk grime it's actually american sound i think but it's it's uk um drill is it's very violent and sort of it's it's like if you listen to some of it, it's very local right so there'll be people talking about their postcode and specific streets and how if you come to our street we will stab you to death and don't do it because this is our turn don't ever we come can- to plymouth motherfucker yeah i'll kill you but so it's literally like areas of london being wrapped about as sort of like if you come here and you're from there we're gonna stab you to death and we'll send you the bits to your mum you know that kind of stuff right and right and i'm yeah. thinking that's not really just singing about your life. That's a literal invitation to other people to step up with their own drill-based retort or to, uh, you know, try and test I the limits it... of this of this postcode uh, boundary system. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm just, like... I'm just questioning whether you can just continually say, hey, we're just singing about what we know. If what you know is stabbing people to death for being in the wrong postcode... 
I'm not so sure that's an inspiring message. I'm also not sure you can just say it's not your fault when other young people are like, yeah, and stab each other. I think I think part of that culture is grown out of the the glamorizing of that that uh, that kind of lifestyle. And I'm just saying I, I don't I don't agree with the argument that you can just say, hey man, we're just singing about what we know, and that happens to be dealing drugs to kids getting kids to kill each other over who's in which postcode and deciding that this estate represents the boundary of some arbitrary territory um, when in fact the problem is a lot deeper and it's it's a lot more to do with you know essentially what is child abuse these older gangsters getting these younger kids to do their bidding so well, I, I, think, I, uh, I, I disagree with you I idea. think it, it I think it's it's interesting it goes back a long way like I think gang culture has always been sort of glamorized and spoken about by by mostly people who are in these gangs right because it's it's almost like a like promotional in a way isn't it it's to say right. like my gang is the best gang we're like the baddest gang we're, we're dangerous and stuff and it's like it, it shows loyalty i guess as well like if you're dissing other gangs then people in your gang will be like well fuck this guy's for real like in our gang like there's no he's not a traitor or anything like that i think there's like a, a lot that goes into it right i get what you mean about like you know just saying like oh we're just rapping about what we know or whatever but like it's a it's such a cultural thing uh, for people and i think for people that are, are are wrapped up in in a gang and and stuff like that like a lot of these guys like you said are young and they're taken advantage of by older people who know better probably it, it's a strange one but everything evolves right like it's the 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 gang culture and the and the way that people beef with each other and the way that that comes out in into music was never just going to stay the, the the same as it was in the 80s like everything has to evolve into something else so right. it's just it's natural now to get to this point like maybe we've gotten to this point like a bit too soon or you know maybe nobody ever wanted to get to this point but here we are with people yeah. actually threatening to stab each other now but i mean Threats of violence and stuff have always been around, like in that, in that, in those cultures as well, right? So it's not, it's nothing yeah. new, really. But it, right, it just but seems. But I, I feel like, especially with drill, it, it's quite specific. I feel like in in the the gangster rap stuff, whilst it was definitely, I think, glamorizing violence, especially mainly to white suburban kids. To be quite honest with you, well, that's they what, were the ones who were really sort of. Well, they're, sort they're, of they're the ones that had the money to to buy all the all the stuff. Buy all these CDs out. and anyway, stuff. But, anyway, yeah. But the, like, the, the the drill stuff seems ve it, it, it's very beef oriented and sort of um, it's quite specific. Uh, the, you know, gangs will do put out their own tracks to like diss tracks to other specific people. Previously, I feel like it was always rappers doing diss tracks about other rappers. Yeah. Whereas this feels a bit more, you know, neighborhood versus neighborhood. It'd be like if my street put out an album about the street over, calling them a bunch of cunts, Agnes and then was surprised when they weren't happy one, about two, it. Five, Mulberry Lane, we're gonna knife you, bitch. We hate you. Literally, your, your cats like, are wow. annoying. This is Man, specific. Your dog shit on my lawn. You never put your bins out on bin day. <laughs> your recycling's all over the pavement after the guys have been around. Yeah, we could write a very specific rap. I yeah. might try and do that for next time and get a sick beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that would be nice. Illegal garage. <laughs> yeah, rapping about that illegal garage. He'll come. He'll fire back with his own track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's it's odd. it's it's crazy. But I mean, fucking. I, I've never heard of that music. Me it sounds terrifying. But but I always have this cynical viewpoint that people are doing it just to be the most extreme and right. to, to get recognized. There is an element to that for sure. People talking about it. Like sure. That's... It's like free marketing. If it's if it's the controversial, then yeah. How explicit can we be? And it feels like the always the answer is as explicit, as as extreme as possible. Right. You know? I mean you think about Cop Killer as a as a song. The most yeah. exposure that song got was when Charlton fucking Heston read the lyrics at some NRA NRA meeting or something where he's like Cop Killer, Cop Killer. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was like a big deal that there was a song. Well, like even NWA, by, uh, remember when they when they found out that the FBI uh had them on a list of, you know, dangerous people or whatever. They right. they just used that as marketing. They're like, right. fuck yeah, okay, great. That this makes us sound even more notorious than right. we already are. So, you know, let's get a whole bunch of footage of us like arming ourselves with like, you know, AK forty sevens in the studio and stuff to really hit home. And like I don't think NWA in themselves were like the hardest hardcore gangsters. 
the you know no like, it's, I, I mean look look it, at Ice Cube now yeah. the dude's like a, a, a cuddly actor yeah uh, I think Easy E was pretty hardcore he, Easy he Easy AIDS. was yeah he wasn't he'd never got into it in the first place to rap he he just wanted to make uh, side money. For fucking bitches and Mac and hoes, I believe. But he was he was he was like the neighborhood drug dealer, right? He was like the yeah, he was a literal he was the gangster guy, yeah. like of of their sort of area. Everybody knew who he was, and he just bankrolled them. But it I, I used out, to love his his. I thought his his flow was really good, and I liked his. Uh, oh, that's what his, everybody his, like. All of them voice. thought the same, but except for him, he was always like, "Oh, I sound stupid. I don't like this or whatever." And everybody was like, "No, no, no! You got to do this!" Like. Just rap as if you were like just hanging out on the street, like with your friends or whatever, and and he did, and the rest is like history, sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's pretty interesting, but like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I think you look at like a lot of these artists and stuff, and like, I think there is gang affiliation, but they're not the guys who are breaking down doors and shooting people in the face and taking money. You know I, what I, I mean? I suppose like, the, the ultimate question is: it's, they're like the bards of the gang, sort of thing. You know, <laughs> the bards. No, it's true though. It's true. <laughs> no, I like that. I, I suppose the the ultimate ultimate question you're going to ask is, is anyone going to listen to a piece of music and do something they wouldn't have done anyway? I mean, that that's the ultimate, because otherwise, if you open it like up and say, it GTA, oh, you're, you're, you're glamorizing it. it, and now all these kids are stabbing each other, it's like, wouldn't they have done that anyway? I mean, do you think they need the music? And they're like, oh, this song has woken me up to the idea that I am now capable of murder. Like, I, I'm, I don't know. I feel like, actually, it, it doesn't inspire stuff, and I suppose it glamorizes it a little bit and encourages... It, I, I think it might normalize... Uh, lifestyles, but I don't think it necessarily creates them. I think I'm, I'm in the same way that maybe you could use like a certain track to like galvanize yourself to study or like you know go and do an exam or go and run You're a race. Such or a whatever. fucking nerd. Do it. Like the Rocky montage. Who you know, ever uses to, music to what? inspire themselves to study? What are you talking I, about? Well, do you know what I mean? Like, you know what? I, I, well, when I was in school and stuff. Anyway, look, let's get back to Ghostface. <laughs> study um, tracks. I love let's that. Shut up. Pumped up, bounce around his room. Yeah, let's that. fucking break some books here. Study. Yeah, he just so, couldn't help himself. He's revealed gonna himself. I'm this, but I am a nerd, okay? <laughs> I can't help myself. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. This fucking book is going to get ripped up. <laughs> Um, so I, uh, so Ghostface, then Ghostface came out and he just, first of all, like, I must admit, I, I didn't really understand, like, a single lyric. Like, first of all, I filmed a little bit on my phone just to, to send to, Oh, like, you're one of those people. people. Well, and I just, he, I just, filmed, he filmed when they played We Will Rock You by Queen. Uh, a Jeez. song that so he they played a little bit of that. <laughs> um, they played some of the Fugees, Killing Me Softly. Oh, that was right. funny. Yeah, they played... A bit of Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit. Like they, all of these things were like mashups, you know, um, with some existing thing. And it was funny. Like I recorded a little bit, and one of the ones I looked back at later, I realized he was rapping like bacon and eggs and toast and bacon and eggs. It's like it's like a breakfast rap. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I think I, I could have done with one of them actually yeah, breakfast to rap. soak up some. Uh, of the I'm really that. hungry thinking about that now. But yeah, like it was. It, do you know what? I didn't feel unsafe at any time. I felt it was really wholesome. Yeah, it was a good crowd. It was, I had a really was nice really time, good, and I, I, I kind of, I'm not disappointed that I didn't feel unsafe. But like, <laughs> you wanted some danger. <laughs> I just, I just wanted a bit of a bit of risk. I think you, you if know, you an push some people fear. around and call them names, if you diss their postcode, you never know. You might be able to uh, start a beef. There was a drunk guy who started like dancing around in front of me and bumped into me a couple of times, and I gave him a big shove. Wow. I, yeah, actually, I, I, I <laughs> shouldn't, I shouldn't use something. the term starting a beef because as a vegan, obviously, you would have to start start a tofu or a plant based, <laughs> um, <laughs> plant based patty. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> micro, my micro protein altercation. So this is what this is what I'm told now. By the way, guys, if if you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're interested in being healthy, you can be plant based. Plant based. Right? Right. You eat plant based foods yeah yeah because yeah. vegans vegan isn't a cool world it's got stigma attached to it I don't know if that's it's true it's like an insult protesters you know, and stuff I, I think plant based sounds worse I, I think veganism no, has no, actually come a long way no no plant based sounds like plant based sounds like really healthy it sounds like you know you've just done a run and you're going to have your you know your protein shake in a plant based uh, snack I think that's you know, a big like... mistake to rebrand I think vegans vegans used to have a bad rap now like I, like everybody points out there's a vegan sausage roll for Christ's sake in Greg's yeah, so yeah. I think that's... I think the word vegan has stopped 
being like a bad word, I think a lot of people have embraced it. Yeah, now they've young figured people. out how to make a lot of money off of it. So it's the next big thing, right? I think the problem with vegan is vegan feels like you're trying to replicate the um, the meat products, whereas plant-based feels like you're just doing your own thing. Yeah. Where does the you word come from? Is it, is it Greek or something? What, is it, what does it mean, the word vegan? Vegan. I think it's just an even more shortened vegetarian, right? Maybe. Even less. You eat less than a vegetarian. Vegan. I don't know, um, but no, I had a really good time. I think everyone had a really good yeah, time. Yeah, that I was great. I would, like I like I said, I want to go to another one. See if we could maybe go to like Glasgow next year and and see like the whole clan. That'd be good. You would love that. Oh you would God, love the that. whole clan. That would be an experience. You'd get to see like, uh, like the RZA and like uh, the Jizza, the Jizza, the, the old dirty bastard, the young the dirty bastard now actually. Okay. Um, his son. What? His son has taken over. Oh, nice. Yeah. His son has the taken y- over. The YDB. Yeah. The, the term vegan is just the first few letters of vegetarian and the last few letters of vegetarian. So it's vegan. Vegan. Um, Thank you. And uh, it was just as part of the Donald Watson, secretary of the Leicester branch of the Vegetarian Society, set up a new quarterly newsletter priced tuppence called the Vegan News when the Vegetarian Society was like, no, we're not going to give you vegan space in our newsletter. And then he said, well, I'll start my own newsletter. And they said, fine, you go and do that. And that's what he did. So that's where vegan comes from. Nice. We learned something today. Oh, Vajan. I thought, Vajan. I thought old, old Dirty Bastard was called that because he had like 20 children, right? I thought, No, he was just I, but, actually dirty. They called him Old Dirty Bastard because there was no father to his style, Lewis. Oh. He was just he was <laughs> off the grid. He was off the grid. There was a martial arts movie called Old Dirty and the Bastard. Yeah. There you go. They um, used to call him Rusty and he used to like, oh, right. he used to be very dirty and he had like shit stains in his undies and stuff and he was just kind of like, you know, the guy that got picked on for it, but he, he didn't give a fuck. He was just like, he, he turned just it around, his, he did a load did of drugs his, and did his made own a load thing. of cool yeah. music and didn't give a fuck. Yeah, and then died of a drug overdose. Yeah. Well, that's um, ODB. He that's, lived as he died. He did. He was 35. On drugs. As old as my age, he died. It's a shame. Um, look how much he, he achieved. He was in nuts. His life. I liked him. He had really good flow. Well, one of the things I will say about flow, the yeah. Clan is that obviously I knew really very little about them, but it feels like. Like they were obviously fans of like these martial arts movies in the 80s and, you know, all of these kind of semi kind of crappy like like ghetto movies that were kind of often like very exaggerated and kind of just weird. And even like and actually a lot of the lyrics after I listened to you through some of the albums um, as in preparation, I did my homework okay, for this game. Did you put on some study music beforehand? You put on some lo-fi yeah. Wu-Tang to help help study. Most people just go to the gig, but Lewis is like doing his research ahead of time. It's adorable. Well, it felt like they were, even like when they started writing these albums, they were not scared to use like these external influences. You know, like some of the, some of the, you know, they're talking about Voltron and stuff. You know, they're talking about like stuff that, you know, can you imagine today you've got like fucking, I don't know, Chief Keith or something, some drill music <laughs> Chief guy. Chief Keith is like one of the oldest rappers around, isn't he? Chief Beef. Chief Keith. He's Beef. like a fucking, he's like a drill, drill music is guy. Is he? I, I googled him up. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Imagine, imagine him. Okay, He's twenty four. Talking about I don't know anime. Like, do you know what I mean? Watching Naruto, do it like doing the run with my arms behind me. I well, they know, don't you know, though. That's the thing. Guy. Most most rap isn't isn't like that. You know, like uh, the the misconception or like the the sort of like. You know, like when like a kids movie uh, does like a rap, it's they they do them like ironically to be funny or whatever, and it's often about stupid shit, like you know, like oh I, I shit my pants or I'm watching I'm watching My Little Pony, and they you know they do a dumb rap about it or whatever. But like but most most rap isn't like that at all. Like you know, like they they choose words carefully to make make everything flow better and and sound better and not just sound stupid like something you wouldn't want to listen to you know right right but i mean i feel like it wouldn't f- fly today for you wouldn't get a rap well maybe it would i'm thinking a grandmaster like, flash by the way is who i'm you thinking. wouldn't get like a big modern rap group that has a name that is based off of uh, you know some bad asian movies no but thing. back in the in back in the in those days uh, uh like rap I think it. I, I think it still happens to an extent, but it's a lot more obscure. But uh, a lot of like early hip hop and like your, the sort of like you know gold, golden age of hip hop, uh, like sa- heavy, heavy sampling of like soul, like old soul music, like from like the '60s and the and the '70s, and and it's just like 
some of these some of these songs you'll hear for like the first time and maybe you've only ever heard the hip-hop song but it's just right. like they they literally just take a song and just put a heavier drum beat over it in a lot of cases and it's just like okay so they they've just effectively stolen a song and that I mean, that was I, but I, I think that that's the origins that was of the, the, that was the, the origins from, right? nowadays yeah. it's it you know so but I think the fact that things were so borrowed back then meant that you know like borrowed. they're like well fuck we're we're borrowing the song we might as well just borrow like the names from this movie and all this other shit from a movie as well you know what i mean like i think it was just the done thing back then whereas now yeah i mean but but also it's like if you think about if you're making music without instruments <clears throat> you're relying on other people who've made music with instruments that sure. you can then sample but um but yeah I, I agree to an extent you probably wouldn't get it again but that's kind of what made them so unique you know, like it, even the cover of their first album, you know, they were all wearing masks and stuff. And I think everybody just thought this is fucking so weird and like crazy, but right. kind of cool as well. And uh, people loved it. Like people I guess really loved it. My sort of feeling was that it was more em embracing of popular culture, whereas I don't know whether grime artists and stuff and, and drill are kind of more in their own bubble, in their own world, like not willing to like, you know, I, I guess I'm wondering how attached they are, modern artists, to like their foot, having a foothold in their uh, community as like an identity, mm. and they're using like you know, like you said, like local postcode beefs and stuff. You know that that feels to me like like some someone's just trying to write in this thing just to stand out with their group of you know in their like almost like just having like a a gang anthem. It's a know? bit like having a YouTube channel where you just make videos for your mates, and then it gradually yeah. becomes. A thing. There's some, but because it's on YouTube, people, you know, will pay you for it, and suddenly, yeah, oh my god, that's what it's like. Yeah. Holy shit! Um, god, wow. That's because that's literally how I think we all started. Really, was just making videos like for your guild or your corp or yeah. just your mates and Not stuff. Me. And then Not me. I was, I was <laughs> promised wheelbarrows full of money for playing games, <laughs> and I was like, "Yep." Did it? Did it work out? It did, right? Pretty much. Yeah. But I, I wonder whether I or not, you know, because my 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 head has been spun around by how wholesome this this event was maybe like if i went to a gig in like brixton you know with a bunch of guys playing drill would that be all wholesome or would i would i genuinely be shitting yeah, well pants? you might what this Do depends I, mean? I don't know like i i feel like i feel ghostface has been around for a long time you know wu-tang's been around for a long time they'll definitely have a more mixed audience right than something that's maybe new. it's scary right now in brixton but in 20 yeah. years when, like when you know, all these artists grow like up you said there was and have kids there was and a like our good dads, mix of people at and that then they show. do a show is it gonna be a wholesome show do you know it does everything evolve yeah i feel like all the wu-tang clan are now like I don't know, I don't, I don't really know. Have they murdered anyone or done anything really bad? I don't know. Maybe I don't but believe so. They've all no, I don't think they've done anything overly bad. But they, you know, they they grew up in very sort of like you know rough circumstance, deprived circumstances. So they're they all but they've all got like you know previous felonies, and a lot of them have you know served served time in jail and right. for various things or whatever. Like it's it's kind of inevitable, I think. Like. When, when that's your background, you know, you come from a poor area where, you know, there is a lot of crime and stuff like that. Uh, have you guys watched the, this show, uh, The Mandalorian? No. No. Well, well it's on Disney+. It Plus. is. Everybody's right, going nuts about it, though. Isn't, isn't there like a baby Yoda So the only it? way that we can watch this movie, uh, the, uh, the only way you can watch The Mandalorian, okay, is if you have a US address... And you're, you're, you charge the account to that and you use a proxy oh, to view So, Flax, it. how did you watch The Mandalorian then, having known... E exact, exactly that way. Wow, okay. Right, okay. Cool. cool. Well, and good to know. It's, uh, I, I've, got a, I've got a good VPN, and um, right. I have an address in the States. My, uh, you know, I have access to an address in the States. So, yeah, it's excellent. Pretty right. Well, good. Well, we haven't seen it because we don't have access. Well, let me no, tell you something. We don't have a good VPN either. <clears throat> so. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to say they stole... But uh, I wouldn't have minded a nod in the credits. Shout out to Bodega. I know you hate shout outs. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm going to say. Did they do I a shout out to this. Bodega in the credits? No, oh, but I right. wouldn't okay. have minded. No, no. They I mean, even, he even uses the grabby grabby at one point. Opening scene is in a dusty bar. I mean, I know it's not, you know, exact. it's pretty cliched in itself. But I just thought, you know, the very first episode, the very first scene, just like Bodega, come on. Come on. Why are you, know. you unhappy about the Bodega live action series? Well, now there's not going to be a fucking Bodega now. There's not going to be there any, any 
vanishingly small chance there already was of there being some kind of bodega TV show, forget about it. Because everyone will just say, oh, it's just, just like The Mandalorian. And then the, the true fans will come out and say, actually, Bodega's been around a lot longer than The Mandalorian, yeah. And I would praise Mandalorian, those just people. like Bodega. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, there's no chance now. There's no any, any, Like I said, there was probably a 0.01% chance that some Yahoo at Netflix would go like, oh, this Bodega looks pretty good, Blah, make it into a TV show. But now there's no chance. Because the Mandalorian is basically Bodega, the fucking TV show. So yeah, just, they, beat, they, did they it. beat you to it. Fucking Disney. You had to get in there yeah. before Disney. I needed to start my own multi-billion dollar entertainment corporation. Fuck. So what do you think of it? I thought it was great. <laughs> It's only like two episodes out. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. I'm not allowed to have opinions anymore, am I? I forgot. Well, now it's that, good. Well, no, I just, I just, it's like you've had the dog for 12 hours. We love her. She's on, she's not allowed on the sofa. The kids are cleaning their room. We'll see the first episode of The Mandalorian and it's great. Two episodes. Oh. Two episodes. Right. First right. two episodes. And I've also been watching <clears throat> a show called Succession. Right. Um, which has got Brian Cox, the good one, not the fucking flake scientist the good brian cox from the um tell us and, how you uh, really feel about brian cox i don't like him Fuck. i don't like him he's a leech right on the bbc taxpayer <laughs> <laughs> he's every woman every middle-aged housewife's wet dream is, is he they you, That's yeah a little you're bit going off to work to hard grind and she's staying at home Flicking her bean to Brian Cox to <laughs> flick her bean. And I'm that the boomer, <laughs> apparently. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> flicking her bean. Oh, Unbelievable. We've reached a new low on this podcast. That's a low. Of Lewis <laughs> the boomer B- Brindley. <laughs> Oh, unbelievable! Jesus but yeah, Succession is really good. Succession. I recommend it. I've been watching uh, the Devil Next Door. Which uh, I think is is been pretty interesting. It's about the um, the guy. Oh, that's good. In the eighties, yeah. they think he was a uh, Nazi death camp operator. He yes. maintains that he wasn't. And John I, Demaniuk. We recommended the, you this Demen- last week. Demaniuk. Yeah. yeah, that's the Demaniuk. That's the one. I'm glad you're watching. It's that. very that's harrowing, good. but very good. I love courtroom stuff because I find it so fascinating. Yeah, same, uh, in general. Same. But I, it, I, find, it's, it's I feel really like good. I like that better than the like stuff like the men like superhero stuff and like i i i much prefer real crime like real stuff documentaries and stuff now to like fiction well it's i think what's nice about it is that when this was happening it happened over this 20 year period and so you only really got it in dribs and drabs when you were living through it and so it's now sort of this whole historical story all pieced yeah, I mean, together was, nicely well it was going on i was seven years old so like i don't think i was keeping up with it back then you know like didn't have my device yeah. with the uh, notifications turned on or anything back then to like let me know the latest on the but Demenuk even stuff case. that you've lived even Demenuk. stuff that you've lived through you know you don't necessarily you didn't necessarily follow every single aspect no. of it or certainly know what was going on behind no, the scenes not, no. you know anyway we've got to go but thanks for listening this is a very positive podcast actually Ghost it was, Killer it was, was good. one of it was one of the better ones actually lots of lots of good things I don't think good. we talked about porn or dicks or anything once. This time. A little bit. Um, but Who did it? Who was it? He said flick in a bean. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fuck, I take it all back. <laughs> God damn, Lewis. What the all hell right. goes through I've your mind? Um, thanks, everybody. See you next time. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.